um, needing any Chinese um, translation. If you need Chinese translation, you can use two ways. Um, so if you want to take a look, um, Ruby, do, do you mind giving to the next slide? Um, yeah, if you need any, yeah, if you need any um, Chinese translation, you can scan the QR code there. If for some reason Zoom is not cooperative, you can always go to our YouTube link um, and you can also type in that chat. I'll be checking that chat for um, any of your comments or questions. And everybody else who's staying on Zoom, um, right now I want you to go find the little chat bubble box um, and the Q&A um, bubble boxes. Go ahead and open those up right now because we're gonna jump right into chat. Right. Right after everybody introduces themselves, and that way, um, that way, a really quick thank you to all of our Tuesday Talk Partners schools. We continue to do these because of your support and because of your students, um, I'll be able to host um, some really, really fun colleagues of mine. Um, some of these people have been doing Tuesday Talks with me for years. So I'm really excited that you're here. Um, cool slides. Just, and I'm just going to, you guys can tell, um, and I am in rural New Hampshire <laughs> at a conference with a lot of officers. Um, and so what it means is my wife is a little bit spotty today. So, but thankfully, and so they're gonna help me carry the conversation um, if for some reason I get knocked off. So, um, great. Well, today we're gonna be talking about, last week we talked a little bit about of this because we talked about essays. We talked about what what are you supposed to write in your essay, um, and it is going to be require you to be maybe a little bit of vulnerable. It's going to require you to learn how to kind of ask hard questions, and so um, so I'm going to start off by asking my guests to ask themselves some hard questions <laughs> but before we um Ruby, if you want to um, each of you can introduce yourself and give us a fun fact hi everyone thank you so much for joining us and bearing with us as we deal with the technology issues today uh, my name is ruby bhattacharya i am the director of recruitment and selection at barnard college barnard college is a liberal arts and science college for women uh, in partnership with columbia university in new york city so we're a college of about 3,000 students within columbia uh, university dedicated to empowering extraordinary women i will turn it over to ryan Thank you, Ruby. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Ricciardi. I am an Associate Dean of Admissions at Bowdoin College. It is in Brunswick, Maine. Uh, Bowdoin is a liberal arts college that is dedicated, uh, endowed, and founded to serve the common good. Um, and really excited to be able to spend some time with you today talking about who you are and why that matters. Um, and I will pass it over to Alexandria. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Alexandria Waters. I'm a senior assistant director of admissions here at U Chicago. We are a medium sized liberal arts college within a larger research institution, and we're very much committed to open discourse, free expression, no questions, no, no perspectives are off the table. So we really loved um, challenging each other and um, considering new ideas. So 
that's a bit about our university. Fun fact, um, I think we're sharing fun facts here. So I'll say that um, I, uh, as someone who lives in the uh, city of Chicago, I love food as well. And I have a map currently of almost 600 different restaurants to try. So if you ever need recommendations for where to go eat in Chicago, please um, feel free to reach out. And I'll turn it over to, let's see, Anna. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. My name is Anna Deckert. I'm Senior Associate Director of Admissions at Dartmouth College. I oversee our international student recruitment. Um, Dartmouth College is a uh, larger school if you're looking at liberal arts colleges, smaller school if you're looking at research universities. Um, we are in a part of somewhat rural New Hampshire that has much better internet than where Gloria is right now, I can promise you on our campus. Um, so we have a whole range of programs, everything from visual arts to, to engineering set in a really stunning um, kind of natural setting between the, the White Mountains, Green Mountains, and next to the Connecticut River. Um, and a little fun fact about myself, um, we really experience all four seasons here and I'm a skier. I grew up ski racing and was a ski instructor um, for many years in, in the winter. I'll Ryan, we didn't share our fun facts. So <sighs> Ryan and I aren't just fun, but I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and share. Um, I just came from an Indian wedding. It was a Indian Jewish Muslim wedding and I am now covered in, in henna. So that you may see it pop up during the webinar. Oh, fun facts. The, everybody else is more fun than I am. Um, fun facts. Admissions is not my first career. My first career was actually as an archaeologist. So I am trained to dig in the dirt to find bones and statues and architecture. And I can talk to you all about the Romans and the Greeks if you're interested. Fantastic. And I am so sorry that you guys cannot really hear me. <laughs> so, but um, my fun fact is that I grew up in Seattle. Uh, I don't think I've shared that one yet. And um, I miss the Pacific Northwest. It's beautiful out there, but Atlanta's okay. <laughs> um, well, great. Well, let's dive in. Um, and we're going to start by asking you all a question. Um, and I believe the first question is, what's the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning? And so go ahead and type in the chat, what's the first thing you think of when you wake up in the morning? And it can be anything, literally anything. The first thing that pops in your head, go ahead and start typing. And as people are typing, because it always takes a minute to warm up, um, I'm going to ask my admission officer friends, what's the first thing you think about in the morning? I'm happy to share first. Um, coffee is top of mind for me. So I open my eyes and I'm looking to get a cup of coffee. I love that someone already put in my dog because that is the first thing I think about because the way I wake up in the morning is one of my dogs will jump on the bed and the other one will stand next to me and they will both stare directly at me. And that's how I know it's time to get up in the morning, because if I don't, they are going to make a mess in the house. And so I have to get up because they need to go out. And that's the first thing that pops into my head every single morning. And it's a little creepy to wake up with just four eyes staring at you. So every morning I wake up and I'm like, oh, yep. Okay. Time to get going. And it's like a startling thing for me. I see a lot of mentions of the time of what time is it or you know did I did I oversleep or could I go back to bed I think these are big questions for me the moment I open my eyes of what time is it <laughs> could I go back to bed is there time for that so I resonate I I definitely hear everybody who's saying that Um, one of the first things that I often think of, I live in a, in a little more rural area and we have, um, we don't have a farm, but we have some animals and we, I, I made the poor decision to get a guinea hen. Um, and this guinea hen makes very loud noises all day long, but definitely first thing in the morning. And it's kind of a reminder that I am not in fact a real farmer and I did not make good choices about what animals to, to have at our home. Um, and a, a reminder that she is one of the most persistent little birds um, that that I have ever met, um, surviving in in on our land here. So. 
I also see the um, where am I question. I think for the four of us that resonates too, that all of us travel a good bit as we meet with students around the world. And we we deal with that very often of where am I? What city is this? What was this hotel room shaped like? So I feel it's that funny, much. Ruby, that you say that because I was thinking the same thing that um, there are so many times I wake up and or I wake up in the morning and I have to remember which city I'm in, what my day is going to look like, but also, right. So what, well, when we're traveling, we'll wake up, you might, you know, do some emailing or you might go meet some colleagues for breakfast, or maybe you go for a walk or a run or go to the gym, whatever your morning routine is. And there are so many times I'm traveling that I go back to the wrong hotel room because I go back to the hotel room that I was like, I was in 601 when I was in Singapore, but now I'm in Shanghai and I was in 2202 and I went to 601, even though I was supposed to go to 2202. So the moment of like confusion and where am I definitely did resonate with me. I also noticed people talking about when is it Friday? Where's the, like, what's the weather like? I have to get my run, like my plan for my run going. So like everybody's sort of thinking about how to start the day in different ways. I really appreciated all the different approaches. I'm still going back to Alexandria's like coffee. Like I need to get going with some caffeine. Like all the ways that people start to engage with what's ahead of them is really great. And that's sort of what I see coming out in a lot of these prepping breakfast, making sure your kid is awake. Um, all of that is like potential, right? What comes next? What are you thinking about? Excuse me. And I think it's also indicative of what kind of person you are, just helping you as you think about this process, really starting you on this path of reflection of what kind of person am I? How do I start my day? How do I approach things? Something as simple as waking up every morning. We all do that, but we all do it differently. And I think there are many instances that you will encounter in this admissions process where we all do these things, but we all navigate them and experience them differently. And so when students are trying to figure out what makes me unique, what makes me different, these are the little things that we hope that you will hone in on um, because these are the things that make you different. Maybe Alexandria assumed everybody wakes up thinking about coffee. I actually don't like coffee. Um, and so everybody's a little bit different. And so help us to understand who you are. There are a lot of responses coming in that I would kind of have a, a further question about. So someone said, when is Friday? And I would want to know, you know, is that excitement for the weekend? Is there something that you do on the weekends that you really love? Um, is it something about kind of a sense of accomplishment of finishing out the week? Um, what What is the kind of follow up on that? And, you know, we've asked you to kind of answer this very briefly, but one of the pieces of advice that I will often give to students as you're looking at um, pieces of writing that you're putting into the application is like force yourself to answer these questions really quickly um, and force an answer to all of them and then go back and kind of dig into those a little bit more. Um, and maybe some will reveal a, a story that kind of is fun to elaborate on, tells something that that's a little bit interesting. Maybe some of them don't, and you decide that's that's something that I'm going to kind of not pursue as, as I'm filling out this, this application. Um, you know, some of the other ones uh, about, you know, 5k running, like what, what is that experience for you? 5k running, if I were to wake up and think about that, that would not be a relaxing thought first thing in the morning. Um, and so is that something that you feel like is kind of will help us get to know who you are? Um, it helps kind of illustrate, you know, what, what your values are, or what you enjoy, or, or kind of how your day works, how your mind works. Um, and how can you tell us that story that's less about the running and more about you and um, kind of the impact that that has on you and the role that that, you know, plays in, in your life? Well, and I think it's really interesting, um, just even these like very, very short one word, two word kind of answers do give us a little bit of glimpse of your kind of personality, right? Like for those who said, I think about my schedule and what do I have? Like, you know, okay, we know that you're like, you probably have a full schedule. So that's why when you think about it, you're like, okay, what's on my schedule today um, as the first thought. So I, I, I think this is a great kind of very easy question to be asking yourself 
um, when, when people ask, like, what are you like? Like these kind of core things that happen right when you wake up is, is a way to kind of start exploring what your story might be. So we're going to move on to the next question. Um, and this one is a little bit more, um, it's a little bit, it might, it might not be front of mind as like, what do you wake up in the morning? You might want to think about it a little bit longer, but some of you probably already have a very strong identity, like knowing where you belong, what you, what you are. So go ahead and type in the chat. How do you identify yourself in your family? I can start us off um, amongst our group because we had a little time ahead to think about some of these. Um, I think I've I've often uh, well, it took me some time to kind of think about what my role was within my family, and and I think that if you had asked me this in high school, I may not have had the same response, or I may not have had kind of as as clear of a response, or it may have been a little bit more literal, saying I'm a daughter. Um, but I think that now I see myself as sort of a a steady sort of peacemaker. Um, and I've really kind of come to recognize and appreciate the different personalities of my parents and my sibling and how we are in the same family, but we're really different people. And um, my family is is not one that kind of seamlessly, you know, gets along. And um, it's someone that everyone's personalities kind of show in very different ways. And And I would say that some of my family members have much stronger personalities than than mine. And I kind of take that role of, you know, keeping things calm and keeping relationships going. And when there's a rift between other people, kind of figuring out how can we slowly, you know, come back together. And that was an interesting realization when when I started coming to that and thinking about, oh, maybe that's not just in my family. Maybe that's also kind of what friends value about me. And maybe that's a role that I play in different um, settings, which was sort of fun to, to have that self-reflection. I love that, Anna. And I, um, it resonates a lot with me as someone I come from, so I'm one of five kids and all of us now have partners and some of us have kids and so it's a very, when my whole family gets together, it's very big and it's very loud. And I tend to retreat a little bit to sort of not be at the front, but I think, um, and I think about why that is. And so when I was thinking about this question, I thought about how I was in sort of two different settings because I'm a, a different part of my personality comes out when I'm just in my own home with my spouse and our dogs and who I am in that setting versus who I am in my larger family setting. Like when I'm with my husband, he like, he's very go with the flow and like very happy go lucky. And I'm a planner and an organizer and a doer. And I, I'm the one that says we should go for a hike on a Saturday, or we should try this new farmer's market, or we should try this new restaurant. Like I'm the motivator. And in my larger family, when we're all together, I'm much more of an observer. Um, and I sort of like, watch how my louder and more brash siblings are funny and really witty in the moment. And that's not how I identify in that particular group. And so it's interesting to see how e even just in my family, in the different ways my family comes together, I can be different parts of myself. Um, so that's how I was sort of playing with this question is like, I'm a there are different parts of my personality depending on who in my family is with me in that moment. I identify with a lot of those different elements too, Ryan, um, at least in my immediate family. I think that I'm the person who likes to like dig deeper. So I like to ask additional questions and get like more information. So when you're saying that you like to observe in your family context, like I love to sort of take a step back and just like listen to all the different stories, listen to the updates from each person's day um, and really take all that in. But then I like to dig a little bit deeper and get to know the, the intention behind what they just said, or um, how did that thing make you feel? And so I think that in doing that, um, 
I'm able to sort of draw out more information of my family because, and I think that that like exemplifies that I really care to get to know them further and deeper. Um, so I think that that's some way that I contribute to our family environment and really um, try to connect us more. So like, if, yes, it's the connecting role, but I do that through a lot of question asking and really trying to open up a little bit more, like how did that thing make you feel? What did you think about this thing? Um, and it really connects more people in my family together. I think additionally, it's interesting to think about how this identity has changed over time. And I think Ryan, you pointed to that you identify in different ways in different settings, but to the students out there, I wonder if you feel your identity has changed throughout the course of the pandemic, for example, has your role within your family changed when you were all cooped up at home? Did you find yourself in a different environment? Did you find yourself playing a different role? And so we encourage you to have that sense of reflection too. We know that you are, I hope none of you are the same person you were the, the day you were born or the day that you even started secondary school. And so recognizing that over time you grow, you change. And so start to ask yourself this question, but then also ask yourself, how has this changed and what caused it to change? And um, how does that shape you? How does this shape the way that you, you know, navigate your relationships with other people um, over time? How has that changed? And so we encourage you to have those, those conversations with yourself um, as you start to embark on this process too, because these are the sorts of things that we want to get to know about you as we get to know you through your application. I, this is also kind of an interesting exercise to do because some of, you know, my responses to these feel sort of deeply personal and it feels a little bit uncomfortable to be talking about it on a webinar with a hundred plus people that I, I don't know you, your faces are hidden, this is being recorded, you know, and it it's kind of, that's something that when we are reading applications, sometimes we're getting the sense that, oh, you know, this is, they're telling a story that everyone in their school kind of knows about them. And this is a very visible or open part of their personality or who they are. And other times it almost feels like you're kind of letting us in on something that um, is not something that's widely known. Um, and it's something that maybe you think a lot about, or you think deeply about. Um, and it's something that you, that is not sort of a part of your, your public persona. Um, but it's something that you feel like in this process, we wouldn't be able to know you without knowing that about you. And I'm seeing a little bit of, of that um, kind of in, in terms of maybe, um, you know, the roles that, that you're playing within your family or um, the, the way that some of you are, are responding to this, which, which I appreciate, you know, you don't need to tell us all of your deepest secrets, but there might be some responses that come out um, that, you know, are, are a little bit more personal. And this is an opportunity where you can share those in, in a way that maybe you don't usually share that. And, you know, you'll notice that these questions, um, we're just asking questions and these questions may or may not be on an application or in a supplement or, or any which way. But I think even just reading some of your responses, realizing like, oh, you know, kind of a motivation that has come from this role that you might have in your family or and then you just start to kind of realize oh this might be why I react this way or this might be why I play this role in another community which our next question is going to be a little bit about like moving from inside out um, but I, you know, last week we talked about chat GPT and essays and how that might impact. And one of the things that we talked about on that call was chat GPT not being personal, you know, that you can chat GPT can help you write something and maybe write something well, but like that personal piece is the part that's going to be the part that stands out, right? Because chat GPT only knows how to write something if you give it that personal <laughs> voice, um, and so I really appreciate the admissions officers being on here with me today and being vulnerable. I, um, you know, we were hoping that this would be, um, I didn't want it to be uncomfortable, <laughs> but I wanted it to be a modeling of like how you kind of dig deeper um, when you try to find your story. So let's move on to the next question. Gloria, can I, um, as we're going, can I just add one thing? So um, one of the responses about, um, you know, connection with family and um, needing to to adapt to be independent. Um, I think that there also might be some questions 
that as you're thinking through this, it's helping to guide your college search process. Um, and yes, you need to be independent when you're coming to university, but maybe you're realizing that you really want a community where you have that kind of family feel and where it's a smaller community and where you're making more personal connections with faculty members um, or with friends. And maybe that's the way that the residential communities are put together or something else. But keep an eye out for those pieces as you're thinking through this that kind of get much further beyond a school's ranking um, and are really about like, what are the, the aspects of the community that I would feel lost if I don't have that sense of family with these people who will be strangers when I arrive on my first day, but that's how I want to feel when I graduate after four years. Great point. Okay, so the next question is, how do you identify yourself in your community? And you can define community however you want to define it. Um, that could be a very small community, a larger community. Just what's what are kind of the initial thoughts that come to mind when you see this question? So I can start us off as you uh, all think about your own roles in community. When I first read this question and was thinking about it, the first thing that came to mind was my office community. Um, we're thinking about our work and we're thinking about our roles in our work. And I think, you know, as we're reading applications, we are thinking about the communities we represent and who we're bringing it to further advance those values, the global views that you're bringing. And so community is at sort of the heart. So I went to like the community that I have at Bowdoin um, and that starts in my office and then goes sort of to the broader campus beyond that. But I think in my office, Oftentimes when you're, you know, asked questions in an interview, uh, sometimes people will say like, how would, what are three words that other people would use to describe you? And I have a really hard time answering that question because I sort of really shrink back from uh, the idea that other people should describe me in some particular way. It's really hard to have words come to mind that really feel like someone is maybe judging you, right? Like it's a word of uh, assessment. Um, but I was thinking about it in those sort of, that's how I got to where I, where I was thinking about it. And I think the thing that I hope people see me as in my office is an advocate. I really think people are important. And I think when we work together in this role in admissions, we are always thinking about people. We are always thinking about how we work with each other in our offices. We are thinking about how we work on teams when we do things like panels or travel. We think about how we work together in committee. And so thinking we are, we are your voices, right? We are thinking about you, the applicants. We are thinking about the prospective students. And so I think I hope that people see me as an advocate in this space because I am your advocate as an applicant to Bowdoin. I am your voice in a committee. Um, but I'm also really, I think it's really important to put people forward. I really think it's really important to celebrate successes. I think it's really important um, to not have your work hidden and to really show people this is what everybody is doing. And so if someone did something really great on my team, I tell the whole staff about it. And if someone is asking me questions about that I can't answer, I'm going to my bosses to make sure that I can get back to them and really advocate to my bosses for this next step that somebody else wants to take in our office. So I think at my heart, if I, or in my heart, if I, if I'm really being hopeful, I hope that people in my work community see me as an advocate. I think one thing that comes to mind for me in my broader community is the idea of kind of being a contributor. Um, I live in a, a smaller town and it's sort of a feeling of like, if you don't step up and do it, who will? And um, I serve on the, the board of our library in town and the library is something that I value. And 
Um, I go to school board meetings. I don't have kids, but I want our town to have a thriving school. And I want to have neighbors who have kids who like living in this area. And this idea of like, none of those are paid. Um, it does take time. It does take kind of mental energy to do that. But um, the idea of like, there's value in supporting broader kind of systems and broader initiatives that don't necessarily like directly serve me. Um, and I try and sort of be an active contributor and um, know, know my limits on, on that and how much extra time I can put into those things. Um, but, you know, it, it's uh, going beyond the kind of self-serving um, uh, mentality that I think can be really easy to, to fall into. And it sort of takes some active energy to, to do that, but it's something I value. Can you all for a minute here, I um, just want to pause for a second and um, define community. I think that some, um, some of our audience might be like, I don't even know what that actually means. <laughs> like, sure. you know. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great question. And I think with community, um, I think, first of all, sometimes when we say community in this context of, of the, the college admissions process, people assume, oh, okay, they're talking about service, community service. Community often seems to connote that we are talking about volunteer work and service. It's not. Community is really just referencing how, here we're asking you to think about how you, the role that you play when you're with other people. And that might mean your family, that is a community you're a part of. That might mean a religious community, a cultural community. It might mean your entire school community. It could mean your entire state. It could mean your entire province. It could mean, you know, uh, it's really just when you are around people other than yourself, what role are you playing in that space? And how do you relate to the people around you? All of you are a part of a community in some way, shape, or form. That might be a small community, a big community. You interact with other people in some capacity. Through your application, we're not looking to see how are you better than those other people? Um, what makes you stand out among those other people? I want to know how you function within that community. All of our colleges represented here today, not only are we fantastic and highly ranked and you know highly accomplished, but fundamentally, we're communities. We're communities that are living and learning communities. And we want to get a sense of how will you function within that community, not day one or your, is your whole goal just to be better than everyone else. That's not actually the kind of community that we have. You know, we are very much wanting students who are going to contribute to one another's learning. And so it's not that we're asking you to get up and give a lecture um, to your peers, but rather what are the kinds of conversations you would be having in the dorms? How might you add to those conversations? How might you, are you eager to engage in those conversations yourself? Our universities provide this phenomenal opportunity for you to get to know students from all over the world who've lived very different lives from one another. What about that excites you? And the answer shouldn't be, well, it's because it's a highly ranked institution. That's not the answer to that question. Really thinking about when you think about that, the fact that you're going to have this really special opportunity to be surrounded by a community where everyone is truly very different from you, what about that is interesting to you? Is it interesting to you? If it's not, you're probably not going to like our colleges, even though they are highly ranked and well-regarded. And so keep that in mind. This is where fit starts to come into play, because in our communities, you are going to be asked to interact with others and engage, whether that's in a collaborative academic capacity or it's just hanging out in the dorms, um, engaging in conversation in the dining hall. And so what about that piques your interest? So those are the things that we really hope you're gonna start to reflect on because those are the things that are going to help to fill out and color your application beyond just, I'm applying to this college because it's very highly ranked. One of the responses um, that was put in uh, kind of lists several things, and and I love that the student is is finding those things, but it also brings up the idea that you can't fit everything in your application, and there might be some times where you're like, well, I am the wise advice giver, but I'm also the diplomat, the TED talker, the creative mind, and I love those titles, 
but maybe by kind of trying to include everything, you're diluting some of that story. And maybe there are times in the application where you're kind of thinking about what belongs in this spot in the application? What is the story that I want to tell right here? Did I already tell something or have I shown that other quality in another way or in another part of the application? Um, and knowing that you're going to have to cut some things from, from the application, even though then you're thinking, oh, they're not getting to know this side of me. Um, but that might kind of ultimately give us a stronger sense holistically. So let's go ahead and move to the next question, um, which is you're going to find it very similar, but it's also a little bit different, right? So um, because in your classroom, you are in a community, but in your classroom, there's also another context for classroom. So I'm not going to say much more. I want to like, when you think, how do you identify yourself in your classroom? Like, let's just start putting stuff out there and then we can kind of talk a little bit about the nuances in that word. <laughs> And it's been a while since I've been in a classroom. So it's a, this, this question is hard for me to respond to. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you all. Um, I, yeah, I, it has similarly been a while since I've been in a formal classroom setting, um, but I, I love learning. And a lot of that means that I like to ask a lot of follow-up questions. So um, I already shared a little bit about this, how this impacts my family communications, um, but I just have this thirst for knowledge that I, whether it's in an academic setting or like an extracurricular setting or just like in a group where I get to do like a book study or like a book club together, I want to go deeper. Um, and so I think that's a way that I contribute to my classroom space or have formally done so um, because I'm not really satisfied with like the surface level response, right? There's, there's always more to explore. Um, and so I think that this is something that I often appreciate seeing in applications, right? Like everyone's going to have something different that they're curious about. Um, so whether that is physics or a language, a foreign language, um, it can be a wide variety of topics. It can also be something that you're curious about in the outside the classroom setting too, but curiosity is something that we really value. And it's interesting to see what different students are curious about um, because that makes for such like a vibrant classroom setting. Um, if everyone were to sit silently and just listen to what the teacher said, um, that wouldn't be as dynamic, right? And so we love that our students um, do get to challenge each other and ask further questions along the way too. I, I, so I appreciate that. I, as much as you can't have a classroom that's fully quiet, you also can't have a classroom of people always talking. And so I think there's a real balance. And I actually, to our sort of earlier points about how we grow and change and expect you to grow and change, I noticed in reflecting on this question that I was a different person in the classroom during high school and college and graduate school. And so in high school, I was in the front of the classroom. I raised my hand all the time. I wanted to answer the question. And I was very um, sort of dedicated to getting the right answer. And in college, I initially actually was really intimidated in the classroom. I, I thought everybody in the room was smarter than I was, and I got really nervous about asking questions. Um, and that was my first semester. I was really quiet in college. And my second semester, and then moving forward, I realized that I was in this college and in this classroom for a reason and that I had something to contribute and that asking questions became a sort of part of that, but it sort of became a more of a balance of being an active listener and an active questioner and that I was really learning that I could learn as much from the people around me in the classroom as I could from my professor standing in the front. And by the time I got to graduate school, the person I was in that classroom was someone who was really drilled down into a very specific topic and really trying to push the boundaries of that topic out. And so it became, I became more of a person that was asking, why can't I ask this question and go further into that area? And so like really sort of breaking walls 
of a discipline that has been around for a long time. And so like I, what I noticed about this classroom is like, or what I noticed about this question is the growth throughout my time in a classroom. Um, and just thinking about this idea that you are not a static person. The person you were when you started high school is not the person you're going to be when you graduate, is not the person who's going to start college, is not the person who's going to graduate college. And that growth is really important. And that reflection on how you learn is going to be a part of the process. Um, and to Alexandria's point, it takes all types to make our classrooms run. And I don't think that you should try to be someone or show us someone you're not, um, because you in a classroom matter, and you're going to make a difference in the way that you learn, because someone else is going to learn from you. And that's sort of how I um, came to reflect on my own pathway through education, which has been really different in each stage. I identify with that as well, Ryan. I think just thinking about my growth with just thinking about how I learn has also changed over time. I want to say that thinking back to high school, I went to a high school where the emphasis wasn't so much on the learning as it was on the achieving. How do you get good grades? How do you memorize as much as possible to be able to take the exam? Um, have you spoken up in class because there are participation points? And, you know, I think when I got to college and really realizing that my relationship with the idea of what grade am I getting, what grade am I getting, that changed so significantly because in high school, that question occupied my mind constantly. Probably in high school, when I woke up in the morning, that's what I was thinking about. What grade am I getting? What grade am I getting? Um, and when I got to college and university and thinking about graduate school as well, really realizing that I wanted my shift to not be, you know, I wanted my mindset to really be on the learning as opposed to what grade am I getting? What grade am I getting? And so, you know, notice that the question here is we're asking you to reflect on yourself in the classroom. It's not, are you the best in your class? Did you get the most points in your class? Those are not questions that occupy our mind when we're reading your application. We want to know when you're in a classroom setting, who are you? What role do you play? And so help us to understand that. And so also challenge yourself to think about when the grades aren't on the table, wh who am I? What am I doing when I'm not being graded? Um, how do I like to learn? Um, these are really important questions that I think in high school, and we, we know that our colleges and this process can be so much to blame where you're so focused day to day on how many points can I get? How can I get the highest grade possible? Take those questions out of your mind for a moment and just think about how do I like to learn? What are the things that excite me most when we're in class? Do I like when we have discussion? Do I like when others are talking? Um, you know, when we are having discussion, what role do I play? Take a moment to have those questions, um, to, to really think through those questions. Also realize that for many of you, the kind of school that you're in, the focus is on memorization. The focus is on how many points can I get? And know that, just be aware that the experience will be different at our colleges. So the challenge for you is to think about when I'm in a different environment, who might I be and what, what might that look like for me? And is that something I am excited for? Am I intimidated by that? Um, and so keep that in mind that we're asking these questions because we really want you to have thought about who you could be within the context of our institutions. Yeah, and I was I was going to say, you know, like you might not be thrilled with the way that your current classrooms are set up, you know, and that's and that might be the reason why you're looking to go abroad because you want a new experience uh, um, in education. Um, and so, you know, some of these questions are are like, well, I am I am in this kind of box or context, but if I could choose or if I could change or if I could do something like that might be some of the reflection point of like, I'm not fully satisfied with the learning opportunities I have here. What would I want to do? And, you know, we've had questions about like, should I do a summer program? Should I do a, you know, like sometimes, you know, people do summer programs because they think it looks good on the application. But, but what we've been trying to tell you is like, no, sometimes you do a summer program because you've been limited in this kind of box that you're in and you want to explore a different type of learning and it, with different types of people. And that might be part of your growth process. It might be part of your exploration process. Um, and so, so, you know, I, again, asking these questions are just the beginning of a whole, <laughs> a whole deep dive 
and what your um, motivations are, but also your hopes and dreams, you know, and your and your um, desires for the future. So we're going to move on to the outside of the classroom question. Um, and because I know we're, you know, I want to make sure we kind of like tie this all together. And the time just always goes by so quickly. Um, so how do you identify yourself outside the classroom? And I know you might think like, oh, we just talked about community. Isn't that outside the classroom? And so, but like maybe think a little bit more specifically on like the actual time spent um, that might help you. Like, what are you doing outside of the classroom? And then how do you identify yourself outside the classroom? I can, I can start us off. I um, don't have a particularly deep or reflective <laughs> answers on this one. Um, I, the time I spend outside, so for, for purposes of this exercise, I was like, okay, classroom is my job. So outside of my job, what do I do? Um, and outside of my job, what I love to do, I love running. Sorry, Anna. Um, <laughs> But I love running. It is a way that I find a uh, time to process and stress release. And um, it's it's my own time. It's time away from everybody else in my household. And so it's just about sort of this space that I get. I love baking and cooking. Um, I have like spent literally weeks of time uh, trying to perfect the chocolate chip cookie and I have like very deep thoughts about what type of chocolate you use, whether you refrigerate the dough before you bake it or not. Um, and it, it's interesting to me because I think baking and cooking, I don't, I am not, I do not consider myself a creative person. I'm very, very good at like logistics, processes. I'm good at organizing, but in terms of creating things, I've always sort of hit this block. Like I don't paint or sing or draw or don't ask me to dance. It's disgusting. Um, but like, I think that in the kitchen it's where I actually allow myself the freedom to break rules and to really like dig in and try things and have them fail and be okay with that. It's okay if a chocolate chip cookie doesn't taste good, you can just throw it out. Um, and I don't think when I was growing up, I ever allowed myself the space to feel like failure was okay. And I think that really created a creative block for me. And so as I have gotten older, like that is my outlet for creativity and for being okay with failure. Um, and so it was an interesting realization as I was reflecting on this question about not just like this outlet into creativity, which I've thought about a lot in baking, um, but really acceptable failure um, and, and how failure leads to better outcomes on the other end, i.e. in this case, better cookies, uh, which is never a bad thing. Ryan and I have been friends for a long time. This is also something you're learning today that among highly selective admissions officers, there are friendships. Um, we don't talk about your applications, but what we do talk about is baking. Ryan and I have traded many baking notes over the years, successes and failures. Don't even get us started about the use of dental floss in baking. No, we both, we both, we can talk about it for a while. Um, but I bring this up because I think for a lot of you out there, your prevailing identity for a lot of your life has been student. And so this question really asks you to take that hat off. Who are you when you're not a student? I mean, I think we're all, we can argue on a very philosophical level that we're all students and that we're all always learning. But when you're not you know, the student who is enrolled in your school, sitting in a classroom, who are you? And I think for a lot of you, you don't see a lot of the value in, the th in all the things that you are outside of the person who goes to school and gets good grades. And so really thinking about all the things that you are beyond that. And so with this question, we're not just asking you to think about, well, what extracurriculars do you have? Notice that's not the question. The question here is really asking yourself to reflect on how you spend your time. Um, so I, I often tell students, how do you spend your time when you're not studying and when you're not sleeping? That's what I'm hoping to get to understand through your application is how do you spend your time? Again, notice the question is not, well, how many awards have you won and how many prizes do you have? 
Um, that's not the question. You know, I, when Ryan and I talk about baking, it's not trading, you know, how many ribbons have we won or how many awards? Cause Ryan and I don't have ribbons and things for that. We just like to bake so we can eat. This is purely the rationale for our baking. And so keep that in mind that this is not about, you know, there might be little things that seem so everyday to you, whether that's the way that you play with your little sister, or it's the way that you um, enjoy going, you know, shopping, or it's the way that you, you know, interact with just your, your neighbors. There could be things that seem very everyday to you, but at the same time, they make you, you. And I hope that we get to know those through your application. And to be clear, if you're going to use dental floss to cut cinnamon rolls, it should not be mint flavored. That's weird. These are things that we've learned through our trials and tribulations of baking. But dental floss and cinnamon rolls, look it up. It's brilliant. Amazing. Okay, so we have done a great job of really kind of exploring, and I hope that everybody on this call has been, you know, challenged to kind of think a little deeper. I think a lot of, I keep getting you know, questions like, how do I write the essay? You know, Chicago has a special essay. How do I write the special essay? Um, but like, you're not going to know how to write any essay unless you actually really know yourself. And, and this is the work that has to happen even before the writing. Um, so we're going to, we're going to talk about the outlets though, because the application is sort of somewhat limited in your ability to tell all of those things that you just typed in the chat, right? Like all of those things, just like Anna mentioned earlier, how, you know, that little paragraph that she was reading had so many wonderful things about a person, but it wasn't quite, you know, we only got like tiny little glimpses. And so what's a good way of kind of thinking about the whole puzzle and, and to take the most advantage of the current limited process that exists in, in admission. So um, Ruby, did you want to kind of talk a little bit about the outlets? Sure. I can talk about the puzzle and certainly my colleagues can chime in, um, as we go along. Um, I like to describe this process as making a puzzle that when you are making a puzzle, you have different pieces, they're different sizes and they're different shapes, but there's never a piece that is the best piece in the puzzle, or there's a piece that is considered the most important piece in the puzzle. When you're making a puzzle, it's not about each piece. It's about how the pieces fit together and the overall picture that they make. And so that's very true of the way that we're reading your application as well. It's not about each individual piece. We don't see your application in pieces. We see all of the pieces fit together and the picture that they're trying to convey. And so make sure that as you're putting your pieces together, you're really being thoughtful. Um, sometimes I think students take the approach that they think more is better. I'm going to send more. Think about, again, when you're making a puzzle, a thousand piece puzzle is way harder to put together than a 50 piece puzzle. The more that you send us, you've now made the puzzle harder for us. You've now sent us more pieces and it's harder for me to figure out your story. So be intentional. More does not mean better. Sometimes less can be much more impactful because it means that the important things are not getting lost. It's very clear how you want your puzzle to be put together. And it's very clear the story that you're conveying. So don't send us everything. Um, Anna likes to use this example of really thinking about a curated exhibit. When you go to a museum, I'm sorry, you're hearing New York City noises. Um, when you're in a museum, you don't see every single artwork on the wall. You know, somebody had to be, the curator had to really think intentionally around what are the works of art I want to be present here to be emblematic of the story I'm telling. So think about your application in the same way. How can you really be curated? I don't need to know minute by minute what you've been up to since birth. I want to know what are the experiences that have helped you to grow, helped you to change. So all of these questions we've been asking you have been leading up to this, leading up to you thinking about how your puzzle pieces fit together. And I noticed, don't think we didn't notice those early questions. You were all chattering and very eager to engage. But as we got deeper and deeper and deeper, we lost you all. And so this is emblematic to us that you need to start doing that work, start asking yourselves those questions, um, because it really is important that you've been in thoughtful and intentional, because that's going to help us as you were reading your application. The application is limited. It's not intended to be unlimited. And so use the, the these bullet points that are listed here. You're going to use the required materials. You're not going to send us additional materials beyond this. You're not going to say, see my website, look at my Google Drive, look at my LinkedIn, because we're not going to look at those. We're going to look at the pieces that are listed here. 
Um, and that's how we're going to get to tell your story. Do my colleagues want to chime in about any specifics about these, these particular bullet points? Um, kind of speaking about the puzzle, I just wanted to share that I find that in chatting with a lot of students and with their parents, even sometimes, there could sometimes be a concern of like, all right, so yes, you told me that I can curate my whole puzzle, that I can present myself as I want to present myself. And I still have to show you my transcript, which maybe I have like a really hard time with this one class in this one semester. Speaking about the puzzle piece, um, that really is a piece of the puzzle, right? So there is a whole picture that you get to develop to demonstrate to us all your different qualities, all your different successes, maybe even sometimes things that you uh, recognize were a challenge to you. That's okay. And <laughs> don't, I hope that this, um, I sort of say that to give you the freedom to recognize that there might be an element that you have like a small insecurity about, or that like is a reality of like a challenge that you faced. That's okay. Tell us about it, right? Help paint that picture, that more complete picture of, okay, what was that challenge that you navigated and how did you overcome it? How did it sort of develop your skill sets even further? Um, there is space in the in the application too to elaborate on any sort of concerns you might have, but it really does come together all as a greater puzzle. So we get to see this beautiful picture of each individual student and the way that you get to present yourself is gonna be different than any other student that we are you know, reading their application file for. So it's really an exciting thing that um, please don't fixate on any sort of thing that you might be concerned about. It really does all come together to help us understand who you are. Um, we've all had different moments in our lives, things that we're excited to share about. Um, and so um, hopefully that helps you see that there are many different outlets for you to exemplify what's important to you, what have you chosen to prioritize, um, and what are the skill sets that you're getting to bring and contribute to our campus. And I'll just add that uh, sort of to Alexandria's point, we've never admitted a perfect person. You're not going to be perfect in your application. We don't want you to be perfect because if you're already perfect, you don't need to come to Bowdoin or Chicago or Barnard or Dartmouth. You've already done it. So we're looking for people who are interested in growth, who are interested in change, who are interested in learning, who are really digging into these values that we've been trying to get at through these questions. And that's why those value questions are really important because they will help guide you in your process in finding the schools that will cultivate the values that matter to you. So it's not about perfection, it's about who you are and who you want to be. That pathway is what's really important in this. Um, Ruby, do you mind showing the contact page? I, we're unfortunately out of time, and so we want to make sure I want to let our admissions officers get on with their busy days. Um, but I just, um, any like final words of advice? I, I have loved this time. I really appreciate your vulnerability, admissions officers. It's really, it's really um, refreshing as I think, um, you know, what I want, my advice was, you know, I think we often, and I've said this in previous Tuesday talks, you're comparing yourself all the time with the people around you um, and not actually getting at what you love and what you're good at and what you maybe aren't good at and your areas of growth. Um, we get so fixated on the number of activities we have, the achievements that we have, when that's actually what you all have said is not the end all be all or the thing that you're looking at. You're actually looking at the trajectory. So I loved how both Ryan and Ruby, you, you shared about like, well, at one point I was like this, but then at the other point I was this. And that's, that's kind of why if you're a 10th grader on this call, I'm so glad you're a 10th grader on this call, because I want you to start asking yourself those questions. And then in three months, ask yourself again, because you probably have a different answer in three months. You'll have, you'll have a different answer in six months. And that is part of the story. So any other final words of advice before I let y'all go? Amazing. I think this, 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 I think Lori, you, you said it all. I think it really, this process is about you being yourself. You don't need to be unique. You don't need to put something in front of us that we've never seen before. That shouldn't be your goal here. Your goal here is really to be yourself because none of us have seen your application. So that's that's what makes you different. So I hope that today was helpful in helping to just shift your focus um, to the things that these are the things that make an application stand out. We're asked that question all the time. 
we have applicant pools of really, really phenomenal students who've done well in school, have you know been very involved. What sets someone apart is the students who've really done this work of, of thinking deeper. So we really hope that this sets you off on that journey. Thank you so much, Ruby, Ryan, Anna, Alexandra. It's so it's been so fun to spend time with you. And thank you for putting up with my internet. <laughs> um, you all have a great day. Anybody who wants to stay on, I'm going to try to stay on for 10 more minutes if my internet allows to answer any questions you might have about initial view. Um, and we are not going to have a Tuesday talk next week. We're going to take a little break. And then the following week, we're actually going to be talking about interviews. So thinking about how to get parts of your story in that part of the application is going to be a specific Tuesday talk in two weeks. So I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you, friends. Have Thanks, a great day. Buddy. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. Anyone who might have any questions about initial view, I'm hoping my internet, again, I'm at a conference um, in rural New Hampshire. And so my internet is not as strong as it normally is, but I, I'm going to hang out for five more minutes in case you all had a question that you weren't able to ask. Um, and if you have any questions about initial view. Um, for those of you who don't know, Initial View is a video interview platform. So we do interviews. We do, they're about 12 to 15 minutes. They are recorded. Um, it, it is an unscripted conversation with a live person, and it is completely about the student. Um, it's not school specific, and it is one interview that can be sent to as many schools as you want. So all those schools that were on the call, they can see the video if you send it to them, and they often will watch it while they're reading your application, or they'll listen to it in the background at least. Um, and so that is... Um, that's what we are. There's a writing sample component to it as well. So a student will be given a prompt, an open-ended prompt, and they have 20 minutes to type an answer. So the interview itself and the writing sample are all sent to the admissions offices. And that um, is a great way to kind of supplement your application. As you all heard today, there are a lot of puzzle pieces and initial view is part of that puzzle um, and completes and fills in some of those holes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share, let me see if I can share the contact page. Somebody's asking for a contact page from before. Give me a second. There we go. Here we go. In case you missed the contact information, it's here now. Um, yes, so that is that is what initial view is. Um, there's a question here of like how do you how do you do it? Um, we you, just on our website initialview.com. There's a button that says reserve interview, and you can reserve any time. And there are times available, all time zones. Uh, and you can if you don't find a time on there that fits your schedule, you can always click the button that says I need another time or email us, and we're always able to meet the demand. Um, you get to do the interview and watch it before you decide to send it. So if you don't, if you're not happy with it, you don't have to send it anywhere. Um, our rules about doing it again is if you want to do it again, you're welcome to do it again. You will have to pay again. Um, and it is, but you have to do it. Um, you have to wait two weeks before you can do it a second time. And then if you do do it a second time, the second interview is your interview. You can't go back and say, oh, my first one was better. So be thoughtful if you want to do it again. But most students, you know, they're pretty happy with their first one because it's organic. It's wonderful. Um, if you want to do a practice, we do have a practice interview that we um offer called the junior interview. That is something that you can do earlier. Um, talking to a stranger about these questions is always great. I think so. I mean, if you have a friend, a parent, a counselor who's willing to do mock interview with you, that's wonderful. Um, but sometimes like doing it on the actual video with a stranger will help you kind of think about how to be compelling and not feel embarrassed because you're talking to your friend. Um, and so the junior interview we offer 
Um, instead of letting you send it, what we'll do is we actually will have an admissions officer or a former admissions officer. They will um, record a message for you, giving you a little bit of feedback. So, you know, they might say, you know, you, you did a great job communicating this. I wish you had told me a little bit more about this. You know, maybe you should um, check your background. It's not really great. Maybe you look off to the side a lot and I lose a little bit of engagement. This type of feedback, you'll get that in the junior interview. Um, the best way to prepare for the video interview, honestly, is doing what we did today. These exercises are super important of just um, you know, asking yourself questions. I, you know, what we tried to do there is demonstrate where when you, when I say, what did you think about first thing in the morning? Everybody had an answer. Um, but then how do you see yourself in your classroom just became a little bit harder. And I know it's because you're thinking more deeply and want to have a good answer. But if you start asking yourself those questions, you can actually get to um, the heart of who you are pretty quickly. Um, I'll give an ex example. You know, I, I've once asked my son, you know, what, what's the first thing that you think of in the morning or what's the last thing you think about when you go to bed? And it was, and he actually said magic, the gathering, which I don't know if some of you know, it's a, it's a game. It's a card game. They have an online version as well. And it was funny because like, you know, that was a very quick answer. But, you know, obviously, like, where are you going to put Magic the Gathering in the application? It's not. <laughs> um, but I did ask, like, well, why do you like Magic? And then, you know, what makes you want to play it? And then, then the ideas of strategy and problem solving and having a new game, all of this became more interesting. Um, I mean, just I think it was eye-opening. So when you want to prepare for an interview, you're basically starting with a very kind of basic, simple question, but then you're digging a little deeper and you're finding out the why and the how. If you do that, then any conversation that you have with someone is going to be compelling and wonderful and is going to add to your applications. So when, when people ask me like, what kind of questions do you ask? I, I always say, you know, I don't actually have a list of questions. I do have some goals and themes similar to the talk today. How do you see yourself in your family? How do you see yourself in your community? How do you see yourself in the classroom? How do you see yourself outside of the classroom? Those are kind of the larger themes. My interviewers are not going to ask exactly that question, but they might ask you, you know, like, how do you spend your free time? What do you, you know, if you had an extra hour a day, what would you do with it other than sleep um, or other than study? So, so it's not so much the question that you need to worry about, um, the, the exact question, but it's more like thinking about these broad questions and are you ready to kind of dig deeper? So I always tell students, think about something academic, think about something extracurricular, think about some character trait, and then be ready to kind of dig deep and talk about it. If your favorite subject is math, be ready to talk about math. If your favorite subject, you know, you, you can't just say, oh, I'm good at math and that's why I like it because the interviewer will want to ask, you know, well, what kind of problems do you like to solve or how do you see yourself using math in the future? So if you have a, if you know you love something if, or you know you've grown in some area, then you do want to find the vocabulary to be able to talk about that in much more depth. Um, Someone is asking, okay, where can you find the recordings? The recordings for Tuesday Talks are usually here. Let me type it in the chat. There you go. Um, you can find the recordings there. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for like today's talk will probably be up by the end of the week, maybe, maybe in a couple of days. So come back and check there. Wonderful. Well, um, I am going to go because I am actually at this conference. I'm going to go to my next meeting. But um, thank you for joining us and thank you for hanging on. Um, I won't see you next Tuesday, but I'll see you the following Tuesday. And as always, you're welcome to email us, contact us on WeChat or Instagram, and we we are happy to answer any questions you might have. 
Um, and if you want us to do an info session at your school or with your um, with a group of your community and your friends, um, let us know. We're happy to do that. We we can do a full you know hour talking about how to kind of think about your story. Um, great to see you all. Have a good week. Have a good night. Good afternoon wherever you are. Take care. Bye everyone. <laughs>